Good afternoon, and welcome to this Lunch and Learn. My name is Joe Johnson, and today we'll be covering Basic Application Studio. Uh, we'll be going through kind of launching app studio, basics of controls in there. So there's a couple different ways to get to App Studio in Kinetic. Uh, one of your options is to go through a menu you want to customize. So if we wanted to take a look at order entry, give that a moment to load, and then in the top overflow menu, we'll be able to access that. Overflow menu, you've got the application studio button at any point in time. If you're working in order entry and you want to take a look at that, you can pull that up. It'll open up application studio right to your sales order entry. Your other option is to navigate over to application studio. There's a whole menu for it, and that's going to give you every single application ID along with all the layers for those. There's a filter button up here. As this loads in, we will do a search looking for sales order entry. We've got a few different items for sales order entry, but I'm going to work with the base layer. So if you ever need to get to the base layer for something, you don't want to work off someone else's draft. This is the easiest way to identify that base layer because you can layer the layers on top of each other in a specific order. This right here is our application map, uh, kind of just like in Classic, but this is their visualization in Kinetic. You've got your slide out panels on the right here, and then you've got the breakdown hierarchy of how your detail panels roll out, the orders and the order details into their lines, and so on. You can add pages at any point by clicking on one of these items, clicking the plus, and you can make any other additions you want. To actually access layers, you've got this new layer button up here, and so we'll create one. I'm going to create this, name it uh, price validation. First thing we're going to do is set up some price validation on the order lines. And so our recommendation right now, keep your initials and your layer name so you know who's working on them, and also separate layers while all in testing based on what they do. So this one's only going to be a data rule. We'll make another one for a button after this. So we'll save our layer. If for any reason you needed to change layers by selecting that layer and then changing the layer, you can see everything you've got. You can select them to edit, delete, merge them if you wanted to. If you had multiple layers you wanted to bring together, this is where you do that. We'll keep working with this layer. So hitting this pencil, this can actually bring us into the application. This is our line detail pane. And so right now, what we're going to do is you can take a look here. We've got the application map button that will just pull up another application map. We've got the layout. You've got your data rules, events, data views, and then history. History will be defined when you publish. The first thing we're going to do is a data rule. And I've been using data rules recently, much like a precursor to a BPM. So in this case, we're going to do a price validation. We're going to do this on an order deedle. I'll set this up with a condition. Again, we'll work off the data view for the order deedle and we'll work off the unit price. So if you have a condition, this action is only going to fire off that condition. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the unit price field on the lines if the value is zero. To do this, we're going to choose the action for setting style, and then we're going to choose setting style status. And this is the display unit price that's actually on the menu, and the status will be an error. So if we had something like a BPM that was going to throw up an error, this is kind of a precursor to that, where it'll color it in. Up here, you've got a preview and your save. So the preview allows you to jump right into it and test any changes you just made without even saving. And it's going to pull up your order entry just like you normally would, but essentially in the customization work with this guy. You can actually see it right here. So this unit price, when it's set to one, totally normal. But the moment we set it to zero without even saving it, it's red. So if we had a BPM that, you know, on save of your order entry was going to throw up a warning and not allow that to process, this is a nice precursor to kind of give that idea to the user when they're entering the information. That way they can fix things as they go. So with that in place, that's our data validation. I'll save that. You also have your tabs up here. So this is my data, val data rule. We've got our history here, then our detail, and the actual application map. So now that this is saved, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer. So I'll change my layer, create a layer. We'll do a new one for a button. So we'll do an event on this one. I like to give them the uh, actual menu name so they're easier to find in the search. Um, we'll name this uh, print button. So the components they give you in this toolbox, very similar to the toolbox that was in customizations, although I find these a little bit easier to work with. The hardest part is honestly dragging them into the column you want them to work with. That worked out nicely. Uh, you've got arrows here, you move up and down throughout your different columns. You can also drag them, but the dragging can be a little different Difficult. So I'd like to get it as close as possible and then use the arrows. Going into the properties for our button, you can set an ID for it, which I would recommend to make it easier to find. Also recommend putting your initials or something on it, because unlike in classic customizations, you don't have that 
underscore C to identify what was added. So this makes it a little easier to identify and call this. So that'll set our label text. In your states, you've got the ability to allow or disable the ability for users to hide your items. Um, same with the customizations. Um, you can set to hidden, disabled, read only, so on. You also, in your advanced section, have the ability to change the styles to match any of the other styles. So you essentially have your button. You might make it a secondary button, and that'll change it. Um, same with the size. If we want it to be a medium button, you change your type. There's a ton of uh, different ways to kind of mess with this. We can change the alignment to be centered. And then your behaviors is where you're going to tie in events. So we're going to tie in an event on the on click. So when that button's clicked, it'll create an event for us, which is this on click. And then we're going to pull in from our toolbox here another event that's already been defined in the system to launch the sales order pack report. So drag and drop that. It builds the connection for us. When we preview it, we'll click the button and it's going to pull up the report just like a normal report button would. You can build any event you want. You can tie into the majority of buttons or events rather in Kinetic. They'll let you tie into pretty much anything and you can also bring in functions, BAQs, so it's really versatile. So there's our button, pulls it in with the sales order acknowledgement report along with our order number. So there's that. If you were to have an error on one of your panes here and you go to save, you're going to see on your actual tab, that there's an exclamation point, you'll get your error here. There's also this sort of hidden problems tab down here. If you expand that, you can see the severity. You can also choose to only view issues on the current tab. Obviously, they're also going to show up here. Hopefully, you don't have issues on too many tabs, but this can help you consolidate where your problems are. So just note that that's down here if you're looking for troubleshooting. So we'll go on to publishing. I'll keep this open in the background, but in actual application studio, which I will have to refresh here, if you have multiple layers, I find this to be the easiest way to publish them. So these are the two layers that I just created. Right now, they have drafts, but if we hit this overflow menu here, we can actually publish the selected layers. There's also this upgrade that's used if you're going between versions of Kinetic, but we're just going to publish these for now, and then we'll actually deploy them to the menu. So these have been published. These are all set. Then we're going to go to Menu Maintenance, and we will navigate through here. So here's our order entry screen. Now, keep in mind, you've got your form to use on here. So right now we're forcing Kinetic, but you can also set it to User Choice or Classic. You can define your Classic customization through the Kinetic Menu Maintenance, and you can define the Kinetic customization on the Classic Menu Maintenance this is not an option. Keep that in mind. So right now, we've got the price validation on there. We're also going to add our print button. You have your sort order right here. And whatever has the highest number in this list of layers is going to override anything that is common. So if I had the print button on this price validation and it did something different, the price validation function would take over and would override this print button. So keep that in mind. If you have multiple layers that contain the same controls, the highest number is going to overwrite the lower numbers. So if we apply both of those, give our order entry a second to come in, and I picked an order that doesn't have a line on it, so let's add one. So you can see our unit price came through, and then we'll look at publish history. So our unit price is here, and we will go back to the App Studio. So in our App Studio, if we look at that price validation layer, this is your history. So you can also see when was this published, your user, if it's published, that version, when it was created, and any comments that were added on there. So this is part of that a bulk. Otherwise, it will ask you to input a comment on the bulk publishing. If you bulk publish layers, it will not. And then the other item here is if I wanted to, if after testing, I determined that these two layers were good and they should be part of the same layer at this point, they've both been approved. We can go through the merge layer. We can pick both of them and then we can promote them. You can also load from personalizations. If the user has personalizations, you can load them in and create them as layers if you want to push them out into production. All right, that's everything I have. If everyone who has any questions, please send them in the chat. Uh, you have one question. Uh, Justin asked, is there any benefit to publishing on the App Studio menu table versus using the overflow within Application Studio? And I'm assuming they mean the publish there on the top, right? Yes, there is the publish here. The reason I typically do it through the Application Studio window is if you're building everything out like if you're building a separate layer for your print button and then your rules and then any other events testing they work individually um, i like to publish those all separate and then as you go through it you can then merge them uh, you could commit on here for your publishments but if you have multiple layers that you built out like i did there 
it works a little easier to do the bulk publishing in App Studio. I believe there is a good version of user training guide, Jeff. Uh, I don't know. There's probably one for the recent version for 2023 too. I haven't read through it, but they've got some of the basics in there. I think there's some information on Epicare actually for walking through App Studio. And also if you hit your help buttons in here, they also provide some quick start guides if you have a kinetic instance in place. Is there a big difference between 2022 and 2023 App Studio? I don't know if there's a huge difference. Um, one of the things that has come up is there's some guide setup on some of the buttons and uh, data grids which is awesome, but so far we found that it doesn't always work. So their, their guided setup is hit or miss with whether it works. And that's on things like their data views, where if you're adding one, there's a data view guided setup along with on panel cards. Uh, I will also add to that that a lot of the things that were in 2022, they have some things, especially in your properties for your controls, that just are there but don't function yet. And I know 2023 they added tool tips, like Joe, if you go over something there and hover over it, it should give you a little brief description of what it does. I know that's a 2023 feature and not a 2022 feature. Uh, what version did they add merging personalizations? I thought it was just layers that could merge. You, What happens in Kinetic, I don't know what version they added it, but you can take your personalizations and promote them to a layer and then you can merge them down. I don't think you can merge personalizations themselves, but they're treated kind of like pseudo layers that go at the very end for a personalization. That'll conclude our presentation for today. Want more Coda Bears Lunch and Learn? Check out our channel for more videos or contact us on our website for registration information.